welcome to my channel. My name is Donna from AxeRadSec.com where I help you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. My first video was on the reciprocity law, how you can change your MA and your time and maintain the same MAS and maintain the same image quality while improving your, you know, things like motion blue and that kind of thing, image sharpness, as well as in my second video I actually spoke about working as a radiology student is it possible can you do full-time what was my experience with that right and of course in this video I'm getting into radiation safety becoming a mother or wanting to become a mother what I would advise mothers to do or people who I, who would want to be a mother because I got this question a couple times about radiation safety and work-life balance and that kind of thing so let's get into that one I'm in need of an x-ray the first aspect of this video will be about radiation and radiation safety because as you can see by this comment right here right this person was wondering about radiation safety this person right here mm -hmm, positive you want and this one here as well right they were wondering about what this will be like right and especially as somebody who wants to get in to being a homemaker being a mother uh, who or someone who's just curious about radiation safety in the field of radiography we have a huge principle that we live by that we swear by that we try by that we focus on that we ingrain in the minds of students and radiographers alike right and that is alara the alara principle means as low as reasonably achievable we keep our radiation dose as low as we reasonably can meaning that we want to keep it very very low but at the same time we still want to get a good radiographic image right good exposure so that being said when we do radiography we look at three things time distance and shielding we look at other things too but those are the three things that would affect radiation dose for you the patient and other staff within the room or the department right when it comes to time we want to keep the time short don't be exposing a lot don't be keeping on continuous exposure for radiation a lot expose and done with that right try not to repeat images and stuff like that when it comes to distance we maximize our distance increase our distance the further you are the less radiation you get in the square law maybe i should make a video on that too i wanted to just haven't gotten around to doing that yet but hopefully soon right and the next thing is shielding you know i actually did a video on no a blog post on shielding right the best types of radiation uh, PPE that every radiographer should have and actually I recommend it for students as well if you want to get your own personal thyroid shield or something like that do you I'll link that in the description bar so you can check out that blog post as I was saying you keep your shielding you protect yourself whether it's your lead barrier your lead apron or your non lead depending on the material that you have that kind of thing right to you shield yourself you shield your patient and you maximize your Equipment, keep things in the room in like proper condition. Oh, we four minutes in, lol. Okay, so as a, a healthcare worker working in this environment, the occupational radiation dose limit is 50 millisieverts or 5,000 millirems. Right, that is the amount of radiation that is the cap off point. You should not get any more than that um, within a year, right? So the total occupational dose of a fetus of a declared pregnant worker so you need to declare to your supervisor that you are expecting that you are with child so they can give you a badge right the fetal dose is actually 10 times less than that of the worker so if your occupational dose is 50 your baby should not be getting more than five millisieverts right of course there's the whole issue with radiation and affecting the cells because you know in the first trimester the cells are still specializing so you don't want to be given it radiation right that could change things up there possibly and we don't want that right so yeah five millisieverts or 500 millirems right 10 times less of the typical occupational safety dose when they get pregnant you disclose that to your supervisor and they will issue you a badge TLD or OSL dosimeter. Um, this is the fetal, well, that isn't, but that particular badge will be the fetal monitoring badge. You will wear one on like your chest area and you will have one at the level of where the baby will be, right? By the abdomen, the belly. Right? Um, 
that being said there are the two types maybe again that's something else i could do a video on the differences between tld and osl one measures radiation levels um regarding heat that's it TLD and the OSL looks at opticals, well, optics, you know, light optics, right? Moving on, as a pregnant woman working in radiography, apart from measuring and being like up to date with your radiation doses and stuff, they will not have you in certain areas. So when it comes to um, doing things like operating theatre, you're in surgery, you know, you're always pressing and exposing for seconds at a time, ex exposure radiation is being um, put out there, you're not going to be put in a situation like that. You're also likely not going to be in fluoroscopy either because that is more radiation too than general x-ray would be for one particular patient, right? And of course, side note, when it comes to general safety, you need to remember that biomed, the biomedical engineers, they do check out the room to make sure and do their tests and everything periodically, right? To make sure that the room is safe, that there are no leakages, no radiation exposures, no no anything like that right they test everything they test the shields they do all of that to make sure that the room is safe generally so you should not have anything to worry about there let me pause this video clear my memory card and we get them back into this and i'm back so when it comes to the radiation aspect just know that you'll be all right once you follow the protocols that i mentioned earlier and if you're unsure do your own research and like make sure you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing so the next aspect that i want to talk about is the work-life balance work-life balance example like if you want to be a homemaker if you want to be present in the home if you want to actively be a part in raising your children not saying that anything is wrong with if your parents are sis or if you have a babysitter or anything like that but some women just like myself just want to be physically there you know they don't want to necessarily um, sacrifice that aspect of their presence in their family life, their home life, um, for a work life. You know, the work doesn't set precedence or isn't higher in value or they don't want to let that be the reason that they are taking time away from family, right? So everybody is different, but for me as well as a few people that commented and other people as well, they will be concerned about this aspect. If you are a shift worker, it's going to be very hard. You'll be working very odd hours and, um, you know, your, your children or your family wouldn't have a set time or any kind of true, like, I don't want to say schedule because even that makes it some kind of, you know, mm. but they wouldn't, they'll be seeing you at odd hours, right? Basically, like, no day would necessarily be the same. So you would have switching up a shifts and schedule, like, one day you're home, the next day you're working nights, the next day you're working in the evening, the next day you're off or you might be off for two days and you come back on for a morning shift, two mornings, you work at night, evening, you know, that kind of thing, right? So there's no set routine, if you call it that. When pregnant or if you want to be in a situation where you can not let the work side of things, like, take precedence over your life, right? Because you don't... Like, you're not here, you're not living to work, right? You are working to live, like, this is just a means to make money. Yes, you're helping other people, but this is something that will help sustain life, right? So you don't want to spend all your time working and slaving, and then you're neglecting this aspect of your life in any capacity, right? So, if you are going to be a mother or you want to... For you care about homemaking and that's your priority, you will want to be taken off or reduce the shift hours, right? So maybe you might work mornings only or you work mornings this week and the next week you work evenings. So at least for that week, there's some sense of normalcy so that your, your, your hours aren't all over the place, right? I know of two parent households that work shift hours, so the mother and the father work shift. And trust me, babysitters are expensive, so then the family will have to get involved with assisting like the parents and stuff like that. Nothing is wrong with that. You do what you have to do, right? Based on what you are given and the opportunities that you have, right? So, but that becomes difficult when both parents do shift hours because then you would have to work your way around. The child might get to spend time with daddy during this time and then in the evening, mommy will be home and daddy not home and then 
when a child had to go and sleep the both parents home you know or sometimes it might be the opposite it might mix up it would be different right so the situation would vary if you have shift hours so i think that is the main thing if you're looking for work-life balance you do not want to be working a million and one shifts in a week or in a month some people i know um they would when they know that they are pregnant now are they gonna be getting pregnant soon or they're gonna try to have a baby soon they would not take any vacation so that when they do get pregnant or if they are pregnant they could have their maternity leave and go on vacation right after so that they could prolong that time that they are home with baby so instead of being home for I don't, I'm not even sure how long it is here in China that like six months is it three three months six months I need to review that basically they would take extra time so that they would be there with the baby longer that's a sacrifice that you would have to make as well right and I think that, it, that maternity leave should be way longer like I feel like it's fair to have maternity leave for at least I feel like a year and a half is still a decent time yeah I feel like a year and a half two years you know that's decent for me anyway right that's my opinion so in addition to that, um, you, you, your other option, I guess, would be to take no pay leave. But who wants to do that? You know, like you have a family, you have goals, you have dreams. You might not want to open your own business or you might be interested in taking family vacation or putting this money towards X, Y, Z. So going on no pay leave may not be something that you would want to do, right? Just to have that extra time home. My recommendations would be, I have my list. To consider no shift work hours or set your weekly hours so you work shift per week, right? That way you don't tire yourself out and you don't have a crazy sleep pattern where you can't get yourself by the end of the week, right? Or you can take time off for a bit um, if you can during your pregnancy, like extra time off. You can consider working in a smaller clinic or hospital because it is obviously going to be less busy. Um, and of course in clinics you wouldn't have as much walking to do because you wouldn't necessarily have like portable x-rays and stuff like that. You can request less hours, so you can request to work part-time for that period or in general if you want to apply for a job you can apply for a part-time position if being at home is something you want to do more. You can consider another uh, stream of income so if you're an artistic person, you're creative or you are interested in another aspect or something business related that you would want to do for yourself you can consider doing that part time while you do radiography so that you could be home a little more um, you can and the last thing that I'm gonna say is if you're not even in the program yet and you're considering if to do it if you weigh your options and you think that this might be a little too much you can consider ultrasound yes i'm not saying that ultrasound is not hard work i'm not saying that you don't also have things to do and you don't also probably get called or be on an on, on call shift but the difference is that you would have more time off your feet less walking up and down less transport and lifting cassettes to carry to the processing station if you don't have that direct digital radiography right um so the load the weight on your feet all of that would be less right you will be less like physically tired you might be mentally tired and want a break but it wouldn't be as physically tasking right maybe sometimes you might stand but how I many have a chair like adjust the table if you can adjust a chair to suit and you won't be on your feet all the time sometimes or not all the time not like a right through right through whenever you have a patient right so that's my thoughts on um, radiation safety and motherhood and that kind of thing. I hope that that gives some insight. Don't just take what I say, do do your own research. Ask other radiographers, um, people who have been in the field way longer than I have. Ask people who can give you an example and an insight into how their life is and what they think about it and ask them their thoughts or you Google it, check out forums, see what people have to say, right? Um, look at this one comment here. I hope I could find it and, and put it in. I mean, it should be easy to find. It's just a matter of me remembering to put it, right? But this person said that they are tired and they... I can't remember the exact comment, but... They were very, very tired, you know? And that was on, I think, the pros and cons of being a radiographer. Right? So... 
yeah that's it for this video thanks so much for watching and i will see you all in the next one don't forget to subscribe and check out those two other videos and then check out the other videos that i have on my channel so yes thanks again for stopping bye